Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Coming down now after that last video I posted defending my favorite Keenan and Kale and Nickelodeon film, Good Burger. I mean, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Okay, I mean, if you love it like I do, then you should support it and and just have respect to it. But for those who don't like it, well, that's that's your choice. You know. I mean, no one's forcing you. It's just, I'm just getting tired of all the negativity it gets. You know, that's that's how I felt. Everyone would feel the same way with other films that they defended too, that they love, and they often get a lot of negativity as well. And critics aside, you know, I mean, critics had always panned a lot of films or bashed them or do whatever. So, I mean, I apologize. I know it's not perfect life's too short especially what's going on in recent events you know I mean with this coronavirus outbreak that's spreading around which I'm I'm, I'm actually worried about that but I'm just doing my best not to panic and just focus on what I'm doing I mean I just hope this whole thing will be over I mean I survive everything I mean I had to hear about Obala bird flu, swine flu, H1N1 virus, every single one of them and I turned out to be as healthy as I could be. I mean I've done a lot of exercise, I washed my hands, I took a shower, I changed my clothes, you know, I washed my hair, washed my face, everything. I mean yes I do get dandruff, you know, I do get dry skin, I mean, you know, I, I do get breakouts with acne, I do get gray hair, everything, it, it happens, you know, but no matter what, well, what goes around comes around, I'll still be here, okay, but to make me feel better, and I do respect, but anyway, I I'll always will respect everyone's opinions, no matter what. Okay, it's okay. And I apologize to Matt about my behavior. Same goes with Mike and, and Jonathan and everyone else, okay? You know. But, to make me feel better, I finally got to see the long-awaited CGI live-action feature... Sonic the Hedgehog, which is based on a popular 1991 video game from Sega. And I've been waiting for it for quite some time now because actually I did grow up uh, playing the video games when my brother Jason had bought the Sega Genesis and he got the Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Yeah, he didn't get the first one, but then again, the second one is basically the first game only with Tails, you know, Sonic's uh, sidekick. <laughs> and they're about to defeat the evil Dr. Robotnik from taking over and, and also chasing down this uh, blue extraterrestrial hedgehog who speeds into action, you know, collecting all the rings around so that way you can get more points, you know, going to loop the loop all these obstacles I mean wow I mean it's fun it really is it's just like Super Mario Brothers you know for Nintendo but but for another competitor because <laughs> I know Sega's been struggling a lot over the years and I know they've been trying to compete with Nintendo before they end up working with them you know supporting it and just try to you know, get along. And that's where we started getting all these Mario and Sonic games, too. And they also go for other um, systems, you know, like Xbox or so, for the Mar Microsoft. Yeah. But yeah, I used to play Sonic the Hedgehog um, 2 and 3. I mean, I did play Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one, uh, when the 
I believe I played the arcade game, I think. Yeah, I, I might have had, but I also did play some of the the emulators that they started getting too. Um, but it's been a long time. And I, I remember we had the Sonic Spinball, we had um, Sonic and Knuckles, yeah, this was another character. Just the red version, Hedgehog, who actually was created by Dr. Robotnik until you know, he started out as evil, but now he, he became part of the group. And then we started getting more characters that follow. Yeah. And I never forget the cartoon. We had two of them, actually, um, on the same year. We had the Sonic uh, Sat-Am, uh, Sat -Am, which is Sonic the Hedgehog for the Saturday morning uh, cartoon that aired on ABC. That only lasted two seasons. This, this was more of a, um, a darker version of the series, in a way. And then we got the syndicated version, which is the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog, which that's where he joins uh, with Tails, and that's where you have Dr. Robotnik joining in with two of his uh, best uh, partners, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the rooster and the robots, as well as the, the mice, yeah. Um, and that's the one that lasted uh, 66 episodes, I mean, that counts the Christmas special that aired uh, a few years later. Um, and yeah, you can get that on DVD. They have the complete series available. I, I hope they start re-releasing all the other ones too someday because you know they've been long out of print. I mean, Shelf Factory released it, um, but now they're going for higher prices. If that's the case, and I, again, I'm not rich, but if I ever find them for a lot cheaper, or maybe maybe I might get it for a good deal. I mean, who knows? Maybe if I get more money, I'll. I'll take my chances so. um, but of course you can watch it on streaming too I mean they have it on Pluto TV uh, Tubi or, or even the Netflix even stars app they, they have it too um, but so yeah you can find it um, not just uh, but not just the um, the syndicated version but the ABC Saturday morning one too I only saw a few episodes of that uh, when it aired originally, but I got to watch um, some more when we rented it on home video, and then later I watched the entire thing online. So, but it's cool. I was not the biggest fan of Sonic Underground, which aired on ABC. Yeah, they did brought back Jolie White reprising the role, and yeah, that one did kind of suck. It was pretty. Blandish. It's supposed to be a musical, a futuristic time. They had some different characters. Yeah, kind of lame. And uh, there was, of course, uh, Sonic X, which aired on uh, Foxbox, which would later become 4 Kids TV. Yeah. I actually didn't mind that one. I mean, it's supposed to be based on the video game, too, of Sonic X. Um, they were going for new ideas. Even Sonic makes an appearance in wreck -A ralph too. I mean, I wish they had Mario to join in, though. Now, getting to the movie, yes, this had a controversy as years have followed. I mean, before the movie even came, I know, you know, there were a lot of Sonic fans. I mean, even the rabid ones who are, who are defending it for all they can. But it's like people are just, you know, attacking them for... For several reasons, especially when we're starting getting all these other video games. I mean, even the the biggest one of them all, the the Sonic 2006 uh, video game, which I know that's been criticized to death. I mean, people even call it one of the worst uh, games ever. Or so, but I don't know. It just seemed I, it seemed quite decent, but it's not exactly as good as the other ones. Especially the Sonic Adventure game from Dreamcast. Yeah, and I, and I know there were also other video games too from Sega. You know, even for, for all their other systems like you know Sega CD, Sega Saturn. 
so there was like so many of, of them which way you go <laughs> so. but hey it's it's popular I mean people love it I mean <laughs> it makes you want to go around you know getting some chili dogs and stuff <laughs> okay but anyway um, again back to the movie uh, when they were announcing that they were going to plan on doing a live action CGI video game adaptation of Sonic the Hedgehog, people were actually getting some mixed feelings about it. I mean, for one thing, they are excited about that, and two, they felt like it's going to get pretty messed up. You know, they're not going to get it right, because yeah, usually filmmakers and, and Hollywood themselves never get anything right. I mean, we, we lived through all these video game adaptations in the 90s. I mean, luckily, you know, we had Mortal Kombat, though, being the best. Well, some people had mixed feelings, too, um, even though the second one was the worst. But we had Super Mario Brothers the movie, and that was the first movie that I went to see. I was so excited because I love Super Mario Brothers. I was a fan of it at the time. Um... Same goes for my brother Jason. We we had the Nintendo ent Entertainment System, yeah, NES, and we started playing Super Mario Brothers all the time, and we play other games too. And we started watching Super Mario Brothers uh, Super Show. Yeah, I was excited for a live action version of of this popular video game, and when I saw the film, the end result was it was a major disappointment. It wasn't what I expected it to be. I wanted it to be awesome. You know, staying true to the source material. But it ends up being flat out of your face. I mean, with all these um, goofy, silly uh, moments they went into it. I mean, I don't mind some of that. But I just wish they, you know, they'd tone it down a bit. Or maybe try to make it better. Some of them it just doesn't make any sense. And... I mean, I wanted to like these characters so much, but they're just not doing any justice. That's my problem. And it's too bad, really. I mean, I was hoping this was going to be awesome. It was going to be the best of the, the best time of the summer. But I guess I could have rather just seen my neighbor Totoro again. <laughs> yeah. I made a big mistake. But you know what? That's what happens. And then there was Double Dragon... Oh, boy, was that painful to watch. Despite of the fact that they had Scott Wolf, um, as well as um, Mark Dacuscas, um and Robert Patrick come to mind. They even got the girl from uh, Rambo uh, First Blood Part Two, the love interest of Rambo. And once again, she dies. I mean... I mean, she's beautiful, but she always dies. <laughs> Sucks. But that, that film was just as worse as Super Mario Brothers the movie. Then Street Fighter came along, and eh, give or take. It could be a guilty pleasure, but then all wise, you know, it's a missed opportunity. But it's not as bad as uh, old say the 2009 version which had uh, which focuses on Chun-Li that was horrible compared to this yeah the one with uh, Van Damme and Raw Julia along with Kylie Minogue and Me Na Win among others yeah but finally Mortal Kombat saved the day and I love that movie it was awesome it could still be awesome today I mean, I know they're planning on doing a new one. I hope this turns out to be even better. But nevertheless, I still love the 1995 version. The sequel sucked, though. Annihilation. But if you want to get technical for it, I would definitely recommend uh, Mortal Kombat Conquest, the 1998 series that features um, actress... Um, you know, who, who appeared in the Terminator 3 uh, Rise of the Machines, which is Christiana Logan. Yeah. And I finally got the complete series on DVD when, when I got it at Dollar Tree. So I'm so happy. 
I just wish it lasted more than, than one season and it ended in a cliffhanger, okay? I mean, then there's like so many video game adaptations, Resident Evil, uh, Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, which turned out to be a big surprise for me. The Tekken and the King of Fighters, Dead or Alive, I mean, there's like so many of them. So give or take, you know, some of them might be good, some of them might be bad. Yeah. And of course, Final Fantasy. I mean, the spirits within, but there's also event children. Okay. I know, I know, I'm going over the place again. Uh, but back to Sonic. Okay, it's been development um, since the '90s. I mean, we did actually had a an OVA that came out in 1999, so it was cool. Um, then um, they were planning on doing a live action version of it uh, through Sony Pictures. Um, which is of course Columbia Pictures or TriStar or whatever studio they would choose but mostly Columbia because it's the more major one uh, they were going to plan on that but then suddenly they you know f following the turnaround here Sony dropped out and decided that Paramount might take the rights to it so they did in 2017 with you know, Sega Sammy, uh, Japanese studio, uh, Marsa Animation Planet. So they're going to be joining in to fix all this stuff with director Jeff Fowler, who's a, a visual uh, effect artist. So he knows his work and he wants to make this movie a lot special for the fans. Um, we had the marketing. They were prepared for it um, two years ago. So they were hoping this is going to be awesome until they saw the first poster that's shown online on the internet, you know, like on Facebook, Twitter, or any other website out there with all these articles. They were stunned of how horrible this design looked for Sonic. Yeah, as we saw right there. And, and if that wasn't enough, the first trailer had gotten released on May 2nd of last year, which was my birthday, by the way. <laughs> Not a great way to start. <laughs> they saw the old, the ugly design of Sonic as pictured here. And they were furious. And I felt the same way too. We were shocked. So it got a negative reaction, and then suddenly the director had actually um, listened to our fans out there. Not only just the Sonic fans, but also um, the non-Sonic fans, uh, video gamers around, because they grew up with it too. Movie buffs, because you know we love to watch movies to entertain. And even, you know, kids and, and parents and everyone, you know. They all reacted to this trailer, and, and they were shocked. But then, there are people out there who thought, mm, it was alright, you know. So they, they do have some other different opinions and all. And I know they're trying to give people constructive criticism over it. I mean, because they know it's just a kid's film, a family film, of course. It's going to be that way. Hey, I, I had that lecture many times already, okay, with, with those movies, okay, so... Hey, I was a kid once, okay? Now I know how everyone feels. Okay? Same goes with cartoon adaptations like Scooby-Doo and Garfield. Okay? I was shocked when I saw the, the animation of Scooby-Doo. He, he looked hideous. I didn't like that look. Um, same goes with Garfield. I was, I mean, I was given the benefit of the doubt, you know? I was hoping this was going to be cool, but no, they, they really messed this up. And I was afraid. <laughs> and and if that wasn't enough, too, look at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 2014. Yeah, that Michael Bay produced. Incredibly hideous. They look like Michelin Mans. God, what were they thinking? And they suddenly made profit, they made more money, and they got another sequel. And it's even worse. 
I mean, I swear, I mean, is the 2007 CGI animated feature getting better and better as it goes around? Not to mention Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Free, you know, or any other. I swear, you know. Yet alone the, the live action adaptations of the first and second films, all which New Line put out. But then finally, after three months, because Jeff Fowler did use some common sense and respond to them, and they f he finally looked back at it. He didn't even like it either, too, so even he admitted. So he had to tell the crew to get back to the drawing board, fix all this stuff, and then finally, there you have it. They did the research, you know, from head to toe, they got the character right. So now Sonic looks exactly like how we pictured it from the video games. You know, he didn't look like anything like this ugly design that they chose, you know, trying to make him taller, you know, and slim. And his eyes is all very small. I mean, th this just doesn't look right. That's how you see the, uh, the before and after pictures of a Sonic, you know, during that particular scene with the drones sh shooting all these rockets at him, and he's like looking at his uh, watch, saying, almost like he's gonna say, "I'm waiting." Yeah, in the Jolly White's voice. <laughs> of course, Jolly White did do the voice of Sonic in the animated series, but but there's always a lot of voice actors joining in. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I, I mean, for that reaction, I was, um, they did it, not to mention, because now that they got the new trailer that followed around, they actually fixed a lot of things that happened in the first trailer, because the first trailer, they gave away the plot. They really did. It's like, now I already know what, what's going to happen. And what's even worse, they picked the song Gangster's Paradise by Coolio. Yeah, that could work for Dangerous Minds, but not in a Sonic film. I mean, they could have at least picked a song that just fits the tone very well. Thank goodness the second trailer got it right. I mean, they also picked the, the Queen song, and then they pick another song that focuses on speed. Exactly. That's how you're supposed to do your trailers, uh, folks. But, I mean, you're supposed to market it to everyone so people will understand how this is going to go, you know. But just don't give away the plot. And try to be as faithful to the source material, okay? We don't want this crap. We want, we want people to entertain. We want everyone to be excited and have the best time of their lives. They don't want to feel miserable anymore. It was nice to have James Marsden in the film. I mean, finally he's in a better film than than he was in Hop. So I, I, I can see the similar vibe to it. And and they brought back Jim Carrey. I mean, this time Jim Carrey playing a very mechanical villain that we all know and, and, and love. I mean, well, of course, everyone's going to love a villain. And he stole the show. He actually has uh, Ace Ventura mix blends in with the mask, um, along with uh, the Riddler, the Cable Guy, Jerry Fletcher from Liar Liar, you know, lawyer, and even the the Grinch, and maybe even the other uh, Jim Carrey films that he's all into one, and it worked. I mean, it's great to see him in a in a different hairstyle and some bushy uh, tail mustache. I mean, I mean it's a different kind of uh, Doctor Robotnik, but well, it, you'll be able to see him exactly in a whole different light once that follows. <laughs> but it's basically a simple story, you know. It's about our Blue Devil uh, extraterrestrial hedgehog, you know, who has a persona. You know, he can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. He's all alone. But we begin to know that he's not alone. But he does gonna, he has like a pouch of rings that, that can 
teleport to every place to go so he'd be safe there <laughs> from Dr. Robotnik plus he gets to team up with his donor lord himself from a small town that's a sh local sheriff I had a feeling this is going to be an awesome movie it had a lot of heart energy and soul into this project and it just put a smile into my face so that's how my reaction felt when I finally saw it definitely made me feel better okay so I mean yes it I'm sorry I'm going through it but hey I I wanted to jump right into it so now let's finally get to the review of this awesome movie it stars Ben Schwartz as the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog and he does a great job here uh, they join in with Benjamin L. Bailek as a very young Sonic it's great to see him as, as a very young age before he grew up Jim Carrey James Marsden Tiki Sumter Lee uh, My Dog Natasha Watwell Adam Pauly and yes he was in the TV shows like The Mini Project Neil McDonald, um, who's been in a lot of films, I mean, including Ravenous, been in a very small role. Tom Butler and Frank C. Turner. They also got Gary Chalk, who happens to be the, the voice actor of the Sonic series. Always been known for doing the voice of Dr. Robotnik, along with Grounder. It's written by Pat Casey and Josh Miller. Yep, based on the video game. A very popular game by Sega and it's directed by Jeff Fowler. The movie begins when we finally meet the extraterrestrial blue hedgehog named Sonic voiced by Ben Schwartz who has started out as a small kid who had to be voiced by Benjamin J. Balak who can run at supersonic speed you know he rolls like a ball and goes loop-de-loop -loop and you know, running like the speed of light. Yeah. Yeah, plus, you know, he can also freeze time, too, which is really cool. Just like uh, Quicksilver. Um, but he finds himself um, at the tribe of Ahiknas with his guardian, Longclaw the Owl, who sends him a pouch of rings that can create portals to other planets. Yeah. Not to mention it can go to everywhere like a city, um, a state or country or so on and so forth. Like whatever land he chooses, maybe especially if he wishes it, he'll be able to to go there and be safe. She sends him to Earth so that way she can protect him from all the echidnas, you know, they chased him around. She got killed, sadly. Because um, they were shooting a lot of arrows. They got her. So ten years later, Sonic suddenly enjoys the secret life uh, that's in near the town called Green Hills, Montana. So he goes around, you know, he has his own cave, you know, he collects comic books and all this other stuff that he has in his collection that he found and, and buys and and just have the freedom that he can do. And plus, you know, he just goes around to the small town, you know, sneaking up to everyone, you know, trying to, to be friends with everyone. The problem is, though, is that he just never had a chance to, to actually meet them in person I mean they just he just goes around spying on them you know or just just you know spotting them you know doing what they can I mean basically you see um, uh, Tom Wachowski who's the sheriff of Green Hills Montana and he's played by James Marsden you know he's just spending time um, on the road you know trying to measure the speed limits and that's what he's been doing yeah he's pretty bored <laughs> but he does this stuff so that way you know he can go give um, every uh, you know driver around a ticket for speeding 
Um, he has a best friend named Brad Whipple, who's played by Adam Pauly. You know, just hangs around, try to cat capture some criminals and all. Sort of his deputy, if you think about it. Um, and he has a wife, who's a veterinarian named Maddie, played by Tika Sumter. And it's it's an interrelation it's an interrelational relationship, as we've seen. Uh, they they go around, you know, just they're planning on actually um, moving to a new place because apparently uh, Tom has to receive an envelope that he's going to be transferring to San Francisco to become a police officer. So. Maddie was giving the, him a surprise, and and of course at times you know they do watch uh, some movies you know together. Like for example, uh, they watch Speed, yes, the one with Keanu Reeves, uh, Dennis Hopper, and and Sandra Bullock. Yeah, the awesome one, by the way, not the sequel. <laughs> and also they even watch the the Naked Gun, the first movie. <laughs> Great to see that. Um, there's a lot of references too that you're gonna be amazed. You know, like Mellow Yellow, you know those Mellow Yellow drinks, the Chili Dogs. I mean, yeah, if you watch the the anime series, you'll know that he loves Chili Dogs. And I was hoping there was gonna be a Charlie Brown reference too, or a Snoopy reference, but surprisingly enough, I did actually hear the word "good grief." So. It's a tiny bit reference here, but then again, I think everyone started saying it before they did. <laughs> but it's becoming a more common line. Yeah. Okay, but hey, you know, I'm a huge Charlie Brown Snoopy fan, which is Peanuts. You know, the Peanuts game. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I know. Well, anyway, one night Sonic had became very upset over his loneliness when he was playing baseball all by himself he runs into supersonic speed which eventually triggers the electromagnetic the electromagnetic pulse that knocks out the power across the Pacific Northwest so that's when we meet a roboticist and scientific genius named Dr. Robotnik or sometimes referred to as Eggman that Sonic likes to call him. Yeah, he's played by Jim Carrey, who's been enlisted by the United States Department of Defense to uncover the source of the outrage, of the power outrage that was happening. Yeah, and Tom was all alone. Then suddenly uh, he spotted a, a hairpiece of the hedgehog, as we know, that actually uh, brought in some light. And so it actually uh, brings in an electrical source here. Um, next thing you know, morning came. I mean, already Maddie is already busying her sister, which is um, uh, which is uh, Rachel, played by Natasha Rotwell, joining in with uh, her daughter. He was all alone, and suddenly he spotted Sonic that's hidden somewhere in the shed while well, he was trying to find uh, his bag of rings hanging around and he was trying to check to see and all of a sudden um, he accidentally shot him with a tranquilizer because he began to hear some noise in the background well, like it might have been a raccoon coming to his uh, door and there was a raccoon of course went from outside and inside the, the kitchen and started eating all that cake. Um, so when Sonic was tranquilized, that's when the, um, he accidentally dropped uh, the bag of rings into the Transamerica building in San Francisco. So now, already in trouble, you know, he has to find a way to get there so he'll be able to retrieve the rings and that way he'll be safe because already he's going to be chased down by Robotnik and once he came 
and follows uh, Tom's doorstep. That's where he was continuing to search for him. He actually joins in uh, with his partner uh, Stone, played by Lee Maddob. So, reluctantly, um, Tom actually agrees to help Sonic, so he actually knocks down the Dr. Robotnik and they're about to escape. But the news reports um, had labeled him as a domestic terrorist, it's only to be chased by Robotnik and, and his partner, Stone, for this giant um, tank-like mobile that he has. And he also has uh, all these drones that he's shooting at them. Yeah, even those tiny ones, too. <laughs> because he also sent out some more drones, too, to follow them. And they started shooting at them, too. Um, while they were escaping, they did went to a local bar. Well, actually, at first they went to a gas station. You get all the fans, so that way they'll be on their way. But then they had to go to... Sonic wants up at a local... Um, bar, you know, you know, where all the motorcyclists hangs out, you know, all the tough guys, which, I know, it's cliche, but you kind of get the idea, you know, you know what's going to happen, I mean, these two are going to go inside a bar, you know, they're going to end up having some food, and play some games, and not to mention, you know, they started out a bucket list, but, for that matter, um, but then, there's going to be a bar fight. And of course, a, a, a brutal, well, almost brutal, but goofy uh, type of bar fight that you ever have. And yes, we, we learned that, yes, Sonic can freeze time. <laughs> and actually, you know, <laughs> beat the crap out of them. <laughs> it's, just, it's hilarious. Um, and of course, you know, he also has some chili dogs and the mellow yellow. Well, you don't really see the mellow yellow, it's just beer. You know. So they escaped alright and they checked into the hotel, you know, just explaining and yeah. Sonic is just moving pretty fast and suddenly they're you know, they're getting ready to go and before Robotnik continues on his quest to chase them around. They're trying to f go all the way to San Francisco. That's where, he, you know, they find a place to stay for a while to see if they can form a plan by going to uh, Maddie's uh, house, uh, by going to Rachel's house that Maddie's staying with. Um, because we learned that Sonic has been attacked already with these drones and all. And that's where you get that awesome scene. And... Robotnik is forming a plan to actually stop him. Uh, but then, um, just when uh, Tom was about to hide him out, I mean, yes, uh, Rachel gets tied up because she's going crazy. And then, um, interesting enough, um, her daughter uh, actually give uh, Sonic some new red high tops. So it would be a whole lot better for him because he was wearing those uh, dirty old sneakers. So this is the Sonic we know of. And yes, I think he's going to run and jump and spin as fast as he can. And, and do, whatever he, do whatever he takes, you know, with the help of Tom and Maddie to get to the Transamerica building to find those reins before Dr. Robotnik... Uh, comes up, you know, starts shooting all these drones that has all these rockets. You know, he had to push them aside so in case, you know, he'll be able to stop all of them before he gets ready to save both of them. And and that's where we get the chase scene throughout the entire city and then going straight portal to portal through a massive amount of rings until we finally get to his hometown. And that, that's when it ends right there. So now Robotnik is, um, well, defeated, but now he's arrested somewhere in, in or is basically lost somewhere in, in, in a different portal, which is 
the mushroom land. Um, so it wasn't really a rest to just disappear <laughs> after the, the final battle. So now um, Tom, Maddie, and the rest of the town are safe. Everyone else is. And now, you know, they, they have a new life. And even Sonic has a new life himself. So in inside his his own cave in the shed. <laughs> okay. Okay, and um so um it was fun. Um I was amazed. I was so impressed. Uh, it, it put a smile onto my face and they really got it right. I mean, I was afraid at first, but you know what? I'm just happy. Uh, the cast was excellent. Uh, ben Schwartz did an amazing job providing the voice of Sonic. I mean, he really had a nice persona, and you know, I, I love the way he moves pretty fast, and I love how he, he brings in all the the charm, um, the likability, and and he's very funny, and and he's you know, and he's totally awesome and cool. And he can do whatever he wants. I mean, the only the only thing that he doesn't love to do is is be lonely. So he knows he want to have a friend, and it's great. Um, I I love um, I love that James Marsden did an excellent job playing the right role. I mean, come on, this is the same guy who played Cyclops in X Men, and he was in Enchanted as Prince Edward. I mean, he's 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 very likable. And this is a better role. And yeah, and he has a heart too. I mean he, he even cares. I mean, yes, at first, you know, he wasn't so sure if this was a good idea. Um he wasn't so sure if he was gonna be friends with Sonic, but he changes his mind and, and he realized. I mean it's hard, but it takes time. Um Tikus and Jim Carrey definitely stole the show. <laughs> No doubt. I mean, he was excellent as Dr. Robotnik. I mean, I couldn't believe it. He's totally mechanical. I mean, I was like, wow. I was I was expecting there was going to be some more references to to all of his previous films. I mean, this is the, the Jim Carrey from the 90s, as well as the 80s, that we all remembered of. And, of course, 2000s, too. But still, he really nailed it. I mean, even at, even at his age, you know, he's in his late 50s now. He's pushing 60, but he's still looking as sharp and funny, clever, but, I mean, yes, he's insane, no doubt. I mean, he's supposed to be. I mean, scientist, mad scientists are always insane. <laughs> they do whatever they take to stop uh, this pesky uh, hedgehog. I mean, he's a genius. That's why they don't like him. <laughs> He's totally wacky, out of his mind. <laughs> but he nailed it. He really did. And the rest of the cast were excellent too, you know. I mean, apparently Neil McDonald uh, got a small role. I mean, I wish he was in the movie more, but I understand. Um, but stay into the credits, though, if you want to see the movie. Because there's going to be a big surprise that's going to come out. And yes... We are going to get a sequel. Hopefully we do. I mean, no doubt about it. I'm glad they finally fixed the design of Sonic. They really did it right. They did a lot of justice. They took like three months to have it all repaired. I mean, yeah, they may have taken a few scenes uh, from the first trailer out of there, but I think you're already familiar with it. I mean... They must have took a lot of work doing this, and I mean, they probably did. Um, but hopefully, there there might be more scenes like that in the on the Blu-ray if if that ever come when it comes out, along with the 4K Ultra HD and DVD, so you'll get to see some more features, some deleted scenes that didn't quite make it. Um, and you'll definitely be in for a surprise. I mean, that we might be able to see more characters showing up. Um, because already it's doing so well at the box office. It just made um, two hundred ninety-five million. I mean, wow, 
That's insane. But who knows? Maybe it's going to go even a lot higher. <laughs> um, okay, I mean, it's not a billion dollars worldwide, okay? But it's getting there, okay? It's still the highest uh, grossing film to date so far. I mean, but let's let's hope it keeps it this way enough so we can get another sequel. And uh, the score, um, hard to believe, was done by Tom um, Hockenborg. I mean, this is the same uh, composer. His stage name is known as Junkie L X L. Hard to believe because this is the same composer who did the score for Alita: Battle Angel. Yeah, another film that that a lot of people were having. Well, originally, you know, they were afraid that this movie was going to fail, but thank God it didn't. So it did make its profit, and actually went up to, like, over 400 million worldwide, but I hope that gets a sequel. So, again, that's a nice cinematography by Stephen F. Winden. Some great editing by uh, two people, uh, Stacy Schroeder and Deborah Neil Fisher. It's edited perfectly. Um, animation was done by Marsa Animation Planet. They did an excellent job. Again, they fixed Sonic. They fixed everything. They did what they could to make this this entire story right. I mean, even if it's cliche here and there, um, I'm okay. Okay, I mean... It's not a masterpiece, but it's definitely what we've been waiting for, for fans alike, you know. But, definitely have a good time. And it is getting some good praise, I mean, mixed reviews, but that's okay. So anyway, that's Sonic the Hedgehog. And I'm glad it had a speedy recovery. <laughs> so, grab your chili dogs and have a drink of Mellow Yellow and you're going to love it. And I give it five stars. Same goes with Sonic. I mean, he too uh, gives it five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.